Ancient Greece has left a remarkable legacy to the world as we know it today. Democracy, alchemy, philosophy, geography, arch bridges, water mills, theatre, the Olympic Games, cyber. Yes, cyber. In ancient Greek, kubernau meant to steer a ship, and Kubernetes was a steersman. In the 1940s, the term made a comeback as a term for controlling both machines and animals. Machines, robots, internet, you see where this is going. Kubernau is the origin of the term cyber. Today we will travel even further back in time to the Greek mythology to see how it inspires today's cyber threat landscape. One of the first stories that comes to mind when thinking about the Greek mythology is Sisyphus. Sisyphus was the man who deceived the gods, escaping death not once, but twice. When he finally died of old age, the gods gave him a cruel punishment. He has to roll a boulder up a hill for eternity. Every time he nears the top of the hill, the boulder rolls back down. When I come to think of it, this is just like our work in CPR or checkpoint research. We keep finding new malware, new vulnerabilities, making sure our products can block them. And by the time we cover one, we almost get to the top of the hill, there's another one. Talk about a Sisyphean task, huh? But Sisyphus, well, he started by hopelessly pushing that boulder. He eventually found happiness and meaning in it. And so do we. We love our job at covering all these threats so that our customers can stay secured. So let's take a look at what this cyber threat boulder is made of. What are the attacks that make it so heavy to push up the hill? In the story of the creation, Prometheus and his brother Epimetheus had the task of creating all living creatures on Earth. They gave some animals wings to fly, fur to get warm, but when they finally got to men, they were out of gifts. Feeling sorry for how useless and exposed we people are, Prometheus decided to give us fire that he stole from the gods on Mount Olympus. Zeus was raged after Prometheus gave humans the gift of fire. He took his fury out on Prometheus himself, which we'd get to in a few minutes, but he also wanted to punish mankind for accepting the gift. This is when he created the beautiful Pandora, the first woman, and sent her to Earth with a box that she is never to open. Time went by and her curiosity got the best of her, and Pandora opened the box. From there emerged sickness, death, and everything that's bad in our world. But the last thing that came out of the box might be the worst of them all. Hope. By giving us hope, Zeus made sure that we won't put a premature end to our suffering. If only she were here today, what would be in Pandora's inbox? It would be full of malicious links and attachments, which is actually not too far from all of our inboxes. So why do we keep opening the box and clicking the links? Why do we keep falling victim to phishing attacks? Hope. The final curse out of Pandora's box keeps us thinking that although we don't remember ordering anything, this package might be a gift and we need to make sure our address is correct. We do not remember entering the lottery, but maybe we still won. In 2020, over 80% of malware and phishing attacks started with a malicious email. Some male phishing campaigns throughout the year were exploiting our curiosity as to the pandemic to lure us to click a malicious link, saying it would give us information about the virus, financial relief program, or even early access to the vaccine. Others were counting on annual events and holidays, such as Valentine's Day or Black Friday, to get our attention. Some of the most imitated brands this year in these phishing attacks were Microsoft, Google, and WhatsApp redirecting victims to pages asking for credentials to these services, most interestingly to Microsoft O365, which can then be the way into an entire corporate network. But phishing can also lead to malware, or Trojan. Trojan, that's actually another term originating in Greek mythology. The Trojan War went on for years without resolution, until the Greek warriors came up with a master plan. They allegedly gave up and sent their forces back overseas, leaving behind a victory trophy for the Trojans, a wooden horse. Horse being the symbol of Troy. The Trojans were pleased with the gift and took it into their city. But a small team of Greek warriors was hidden inside the wooden statue. And at nighttime, they got out, now within the gates of Troy, 
and slaughtered their enemies, leading to the fall of the city of Troy. The Trojan horse is, of course, the most straightforward implication of Greek mythology and cyber terminology. Trojans are often used by cyber criminals, like in the old and infamous Banking Trojan, named after Greek god Zeus, but also by nation state actors. One such APT that Checkpoint Research identified this year is called Vicious Panda. In this campaign, the threat actors, probably from Chinese origins, attacked the Mongolian public sector with a remote access Trojan. Here's how it worked. The attack started with a lure document, written in Mongolian, allegedly coming from the Mongolian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, giving information about COVID-19 prevalence. This document is dated back to January 2020, when every piece of information about the pandemic was crucial. But while it looked like a plain text document, it was actually weaponized and included our warrior, exploit for the equation editor RTF vulnerability commonly used by several Chinese APT groups. This infection works like this. The RTF document just exploited the machine. Now, a malicious DLL is dropped into the Word startup folder, meaning that it would be executed whenever WinWord is opened. Another technique frequently used by Chinese groups. Now it downloads and executes the next stage DLL from the attacker's file server, which then downloads and executes the third and last DLL, which is the actual malware payload. The malware is straightforward mostly stealing information like files and screenshots. Pivoting on the IOCs of the attack, we found a few more targets in Russia and Ukraine. Also, we found that the attackers ran a similar campaign against the Mongolian government in 2016. This time, instead of coronavirus, it was utilizing the Zika virus in its lore documents. Well, looks like the Trojan horse is here to stay. We just need to make sure we don't let it pass our walls. But of course, phishing emails and Trojan horses are not the only way to break into an organization. One can also exploit a vulnerability, an Achilles heel, if you will. When Achilles was born, his mother Tetis received a prophecy saying that he would die young in battle. Trying to evade this destiny and make him immortal, Tetis dipped him in the magical river Styx. She held him by the heel, and as he didn't touch the water, his heel became the only vulnerable part of his body. Achilles grew up to be the greatest of all Greek warriors. But after he killed the prince of Troy, Hector, and abused his body, Hector's brother, Paris, sought revenge. One of the Greek gods snitched and irresponsibly disclosed Achilles' vulnerability, his heel, and Paris shot a poisonous arrow at it, killing Achilles. Checkpoint Research aims at finding the Achilles heel of different software or hardware. But instead of shooting at it or exploding it, we take it back to the river doing a responsible, coordinated disclosure and working with the vendor on patching the vulnerable part. Here are some examples to vulnerabilities Checkpoint Research revealed and disclosed this year. The first ever remote code execution vulnerability in public cloud, namely in Azure, which received the highest possible severity score of 10. Our researchers found a way to run an Azure function that would get access to all other functions running on the same machine. In other words, we were able to break the virtual walls between different cloud users and get access to read and to modify other users' activities. Still in Microsoft, we revealed Sigrid, another 10 out of 10 severity remote code execution vulnerability, this time in WinDNS servers. This vulnerability affects practically every Windows network environment and is wormable, meaning that one infected machine can initiate lateral movement to the entire network. And going back to Achilles, we actually found a set of no less than 400 vulnerabilities in mobile devices that we named Achilles. The vulnerabilities are in the processing chip of a third-party manufacturer called Qualcomm, and they affect smartphones from Google, Samsung, Xiaomi, and more, totaling in 40% of the mobile phone market. So all of them had one weakest link, or Achilles seal, their Qualcomm processing chip. Exploitation of these vulnerabilities, which is seamless and does not require user interaction, can turn the phone into a spying tool, stealing data, photos, locations, surround voice recording, and more, or turn the phone into a brick, rendering it unresponsive and making all the data permanently unavailable. So as you can see, every technology, be it cloud, network, or mobile, has its own Achilles seals and needs to be protected from the hacker's poisonous arrows. Now that I've talked about some of the main attack vectors, I also want to spend a few minutes talking about the people behind them, 
the threat actors. And I'll open it up by talking about Narcissus, a handsome, talented, but unkind man. One day he was walking in the woods when he was seen by a nymph named Echo. Echo fell in love with Narcissus and started following him. Narcissus sensed that he was being followed and shouted, Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Echoed Echo. She eventually came out of the woods and attempted to embrace him, but he told her to leave him alone. Echo was heartbroken and she spent the rest of her life in the woods only echoing others. Nemesis, the goddess of revenge, heard the story and decided to punish Narcissus. One day, when he was thirsty after hunting, she made him lean by a pool to drink water. But when he saw his image reflected in the water, he fell in love, never moving from this spot ever again, so that he can keep seeing himself, until he finally turned into a daffodil, also called Narcissus. Yes, threat actors are often like Narcissus, talented, but unkind to say the least. Here's one example. Late in 2019, we were asked to assist with the analysis of a defacement attack on the websites of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. We learned that it was done by a threat actor, allegedly a hacktivist, who goes by the name Vanda the God. While not part of the original Greek gods, Vanda was proficient in defacing websites, including some related to the fires in the Brazilian Amazonas and other government and university websites. When analyzing his avatar, we learned several things. According to his domain's Who is Data, he's from Uberlandia, Brazil. Could be fake, of course. His email address was also used in registering another domain, BrazilianCyberArmy.com. We found his Twitter and Facebook accounts under fake names. In one of his social media posts, we see a username on the toolbar called MR. We have the full name, of course. So we gave it a shot and searched Facebook for an MR from Uberlandia. We found several, but only one of them posted an image of the so-called Brazilian Cyber Army. So is MR the person behind Vine of the God? We do see cross-posting between these accounts, but this could just be cross-posting by different people. Until we found these two images, which are obviously different from one another, but a closer look shows us that the people playing PlayStation here actually have the same TV stand. In other words, Vanda the God is, indeed, MR. So he shared this information with the Brazilian police, and shortly after, he was arrested. Looks like Nemesis, the goddess of revenge, gave us some help here, making sure that through the reflection of MR's images, he would get identified, caught, and punished. A great scene in Greek mythology is hubris, being too proud and self-confident. In MR's hubris, he publicly claimed that you cannot arrest an idea. But by now, we know that that's wrong. And like with every Greek mythology story, there's a lesson to be learned. And MR learned his. Now that he's out of prison, he wrote, I don't hack anymore. Now focus on studying the future. I have a daughter. Or did he? From phishing attacks, malware, and vulnerability exploits, we see how threat actors are deploying attacks that are pretty similar to the works of the Greek gods in the mythology. But the threat actors themselves not necessarily learn the lesson about refraining from hubris and narcissism. And here comes the last story I promised to share. How Zeus punished Prometheus for giving men fire. Prometheus was tied to a rock, and an eagle would feast on his liver. At night, his liver would grow back, only to be eaten by an eagle again the day after. And so on and so forth, for eternity. When giving us fire, Prometheus gave us a choice, a choice between right and wrong. Yes, fire gave us warmth, food, eventually technology. But we also use it to conduct war and violence. This is also the story of the invention of dynamite, nuclear power, and the story of cyber. When given the internet, we were given the choice between right and wrong, between education, communication, e-commerce, to hacking, stealing, and deceiving, between white hat and black hat, between CPR and the threat actors. We always choose good. We keep pushing that boulder up the hill and hope to serve your security needs through it. Thank you.